this video is created by jagrat creation it is on liquidation of companies which is a topic in corporate accounting i wish to solve one sum here before you on liquidation of company wherein liquidator's final statement of account is required to be prepared just observe the sum that i intend to solve here before you this is the sum that i wish to take care of balance sheet of yogi limited as on 31st of october 2017 is given below sundry assets profit and loss account cumulative preferential spalak a type of equity share 60% paid up share of 100 60% paid up 6 lakhs so 6 lakhs divided by 60 so number of shares are 10000 b type of share share of 100 is 40 per share paid up 10 lakhs so 10 lakhs divided by 40 25000 shares are there credit is 4 lakh 20000 Cumulative preference and dividend is in areas for last two years. Looking to the minimum chance for the company for making profit, even in future, it was decided to voluntarily liquidate the company as on 31st of March 2007. 17 Sunday assets realized 10 lakhs. Liquidation expenses 10,000 were paid. Liquidator was to be paid 2% of the assets realized and 5% of the total payment to preference shareholders as remuneration. So liquidator's remuneration is certain percentage of. preference share capital payment made to preference shareholders that's an important point necessary calls were paid on equity shares and they were paid prepare liquidators receipts and payment account so i am required to prepare liquidators receipts and payment account now let me start its preparation first of all i will write down the cash balance that is not there assets realized 10 lakhs So, what is the job of a liquidator to realize the assets, and the real from its from this realized value, he has to make payment as prescribing law to the claimants against the company because liquidation liquidator is a person who is going to administer the process of winding up, and winding up is a legal process by which the artificial personality of a company is brought to an end. So, entity of a company. which is artificial that entity is created by legal process that is known as incorporation of company and similarly the legal process with which the existence of company is brought to an end is known as winding up and to administer the winding up the person appointed as liquidator he has to realize the assets and make payments to the claimants to the claimants against the company and the payment has to be made in a sequence as prescribed under the company law so first payment is to be made to fully secured creditors they are not there then liquidation expense is 10000 then liquidator's remuneration is to be paid at the rate of 2% of the assets realized so 10 lakhs into 2% 20000 and 5% of the total payment to preference share holders so 5% yet i have not made any payment to preference shareholders so i just keep a filler the moment i will pay preference shareholders i will get remuneration to the liquidator after this preferential creditors are to be paid they are not there in the sum then debenture holders are paid just fine you you won't find any debenture holders liability liability towards debenture holders so nil then you have to pay the unsecured creditors so unsecured creditors are full at 90000 they are paid after that you have to make a payment to the preference shareholders so Unsecured creditors are four lakh ninety thousand, so four lakh ninety plus ten, five lakhs rupees are paid. Five lakhs rupees are still with you. Ten lakh minus five lakh, five lakhs rupees are with you. The preferential capital is five lakhs, but there is an arrears of dividend for two years. Cumulative preference share dividend is in arrears for last two years. So what's the total amount to be paid to liquidator? Five lakhs plus two years dividend at the rate of ten percent, one lakh. So five lakh plus one lakh. 6 lakhs are to be paid and on 6 lakh you are required to pay a remuneration of 5% that works out to be 30000 so this is 50000 you have got 10 lakhs how much payment you have accounted for here see 4 5 11 lakh 50000 so you have listed a payment of 11 lakh 50000 how much cash do you have 1 lakh how much is the deficit 1 lakh 50000 how will you meet with this deficit by demanding a last call from a type and b type of shareholders let us do that 
So 10 lakhs are there. This total is 11 lakh 50 thousand. Cash required for payment is 1 lakh 50 thousand. I write cash required over here. For this cash, to meet with this cash required, I what I do? I demand last call, the total amount of last call from all shareholders. And after meeting the deficit, if at all there is any surplus, they will be refunded to shareholders. This is a notion with which I start with calculation and on the basis of this notion, on the basis of this hypothesis that the last call is demanded, the entire amount of last call is demanded from all type of shareholders. From that this deficit is met with and this surplus is left, that will be refunded. With that hypothesis, this memoranda cash account is prepared. So let me demand last call. On A type of equity shares, 40 rupees per share paid up. The number of shares are how much? 6 lakhs divided by 60, 10,000. So on 10,000 shares, 40 rupees are demanded because 60 rupees are already paid. 40 is the unpaid amount that is demanded. So on 10,000, 40 rupees are demanded notionally, hypothetically. Now, 10 lakh divided by 40, so 25,000 shares are there. On 25,000 shares, 60 rupees are to be demanded. So this is the notional demand made. So I am going to get maximum 19 lakh rupees. From this 19 lakh rupees, I am required to meet with a deficit of only 1 lakh 50,000 to make payment to the preference shareholders. So what is the surplus left now? So 19 lakh minus 1 lakh 50,000 is the surplus left with me. That is to be refunded to the equity shareholders from whom I have demanded hypothetically the last call. So let me find out the refund per share. Why I am going to work out the refund per share? Because the face value of both the type of share is 100, 100 each. So when the face value of different type of shares is same, I have to I have to find out the refund per share. But suppose if the face value of different type of equity shares are different, one is 100 face value, second is 50 face value, third is 10 face value. In that situation, I will work out the refund per rupee of share capital. But in this sum, I am going to work out refund per share, not per rupee of capital. That's an important point. So 19 lakh divided by minus 1 lakh 50,000 divided by number of shares 25,000 and 10,000, 35,000 shares. So refund workout, refund calculated per share is 50 rupees. So I am required, I can give 50 rupees back to all these shareholders, this 10,000 10, shareholders, they will be given 50. This 25,000 shareholders, they will be given 50. They are fully paid. All of them paid 100 each, 100 each on both the type of shares. Now I give them 50 back. So if I give them 50 back, 10,000 into 50, 50, 5 lakhs is to be paid. And 25,000 into 50, this is the amount to be paid. This is the hypothetical payment. So hypothetical demand is 4 lakhs, payment is 5 lakhs. Hypothetical demand is 4 lakhs, payment is 5 lakhs. So what should I do? Net payment of 1 lakh is to be made. Hypothetical demand is 15 lakhs and payment is 12 lakh 50,000. What should I do? I should demand 2 lakh 50,000. So that's what I'm going to do actually. As a liquidator, so I am going to demand 15 lakh minus 12 lakh 50,000, 2 lakh 50,000 from this B category of shareholders and I am going to refund A category of shareholders 5 lakh minus 4 lakh, 1 lakh, let me do that now. So I have demanded 15 lakh minus 12 lakh 50,000, 2 lakh 50,000 rupees are demanded and I have made a payment 4 lakh and 5 lakh, so 1 lakh payment is made to the B type of shareholders. This is how the liquidator's final statement of accounts is recorded with the net amount and that net amount on the is decided, is derived on the basis of hypothetical demand and hypothetical payment. So hypothetical demand and payment difference is recorded as actual demand and actual payment. This is how this working note is prepared. The another way to explain this sum, here the 60% payment is made. Here A category of shareholders have paid 60% of the face value. B category of shareholders have paid 40% of the face value. Now, if, as you notice that refund is 50%. So here they have paid 60% and everybody has to sacrifice 50%. So 10% capital is to be refunded and this is 10% refund on 10,000 shares, on 10 lakh shares. Similarly, on this 40% is paid, and the 50% is the total amount, total face value is to be suffered under the process of liquidation. So they have to pay 10%. So 
on this 25,000 shares at the rate of 10 rupees per share, they are required to pay 250,000. This is another way of explaining the same thing. Now, if you make a total of receipts and payment, the total should agree. 250,000, 250,000. This is how liquidator statement is prepared. What I have done? I was required to meet with a deficit. I was requ I required cash to make payment to the preference shareholders. Hypothetically, I demand entire amount, total last call from all shareholders. I met with the deficit. Surplus I decided to refund to the shareholders on equitable basis, on peri passu basis. So that suffering of all the kinds of equity shareholders is going to be equitable, uniform, proposed or peri passu. These are the various words to explain the concept. So this is how I have prepared a liquidator statement here before you. I have tried to explain to you this. Sir. I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to all.